All right, this week's Ion MPI is Circom. Yeah. Lady Ada, what is the new product of the week? Okay. Introduced one, by you. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, back doing the weekly Ion MPIs. We did two last week. Uh, this one, we're back to doing just one. Um, but I really like this one. This is uh, from Soracom. And I actually was going to show, like, they have, a, you know, a new IoT service. But I actually, maybe, I might do that in a couple of weeks because I actually really just liked this Onyx USB uh, cellular dongle, which is uh, from Sorcom, and um, it's actually kind of a, a co-op cooperation between Sorcom and um, Quectel, because inside is a uh, Quectel cellular modem. Um, but they made this really nice little dongle. It's like really beautifully designed. It's got this like cool like angular design. Um, this is what it looks like. You can kind of see on the back there's this uh, cellular module. Uh, and on the top, there's a couple of components, power supply, a uh, SIM card holder. It's actually not like technically that complicated because the modules do come with um, USB interfacing. So there's no microcontroller. You're actually connecting like directly to the uh, cellular module. But that said, like it's in a really nice case. Um, it's got the SIM holder. It's got little antenna add-ons. Uh, it's got a USB plug that just like thunks right into uh, your board. So this is the cellular module inside. Um, it's the uh, Quectel LTE EG25. Um, again, like, you know, for basically the price of the module, you can now get it, like, with the power supply, SIM card holder, everything all together, ready to go. Um, it's LTE Cat 4, so it can do, like, pretty fast upload and download. You'll have to have a SIM card that, of course, has that kind of high-speed um, internet connectivity. But it's also good for uh, IoT projects because it's got uh, worldwide LTE, uh, UMTS, HSPA, and it's still got GSM, GPRS edge coverage. So you've got like, you know, GS, it is, you got like uh, GSM2, um, 2G, 3G, 4G, and LTE. So it's got like very, very wide coverage uh, worldwide. And um, it looks like it's also, it doesn't, no, so this does not have the uh, GNSS receiver, I don't believe, but you know, maybe they'll make a version that does. But again, it can go very, very fast, but it's also very inexpensive. And what I thought was interesting about this and what I really liked is like the, you know, even the, the advertising photo for it says like, hey, you know, you just plug this into your single board computer and now, you know, it, trying to integrate cellular into a board is a real pain. Um, you can do everything over USB and just use like a USB modem driver now you have a fully cellular connected IoT device and it's like no soldering, no design. You just plug it in and go. Um, so I actually got this set up and working um, on my computer in like 15 minutes or less. It was really easy. So when I bought it, it actually came with, uh, I also got the SORCOM uh, SIM card, which I think is a, a global SIM card. Check about you know how many messages and how many megabytes. I think this is actually IoT based, so it's not like for data streaming video. It's for like sending data to MQTT. Um, you register on Sorcom's website. You do have to add a credit card, so you can do that. Once you've registered, um, you know you you can now activate it within your console, and there's this whole control console. What I thought was interesting, in addition to this, is that there's also um, for everything that they do, you know, there's a web interface, but they also provide a backend CLI interface. So if you're using this to like deploy, you know, 5,000, yeah. um, you know, whatever, soda can, dispenser, monitoring systems, and scooters, like, scooters um, you know, digital signage, whatever, and you, and you want to manage them remotely, you don't have to use the console. You can actually automate everything. Um, using their CLI and it's kind of something I noticed is that there's there's always an easy way to do it like using their web interface and yeah. there was also an advanced way to use it that was more powerful um, using scriptable tools uh, they do have multiple different dongles um, the only one I you know used is the Onyx LTE dongle um, one thing I liked is that they have the device manual which I'll talk about in a bit so you know the Cellular modules are not just modems. They actually have a lot of stuff built into them, um, like an MQTT uh, peripheral or an FTP, 
um, TCP IP or HTTPS. So you don't even need to have the stack on the device. You can actually use the stack on the cellular mm -hmm. module, not on the computer. Uh, and they have all that available, which is really nice. You don't have to sign an NDA, which I really dug. Uh, and then for Linux, it shores up as a COM port. It is a composite CDC. So on Windows, you, know, you have to install a driver. I'm on Windows, yeah, I installed it, it worked. And then it shows up as a modem. And then you get the uh, three COM ports. Like again, I don't believe this has the, this one, I don't think has the NMEA, the GPS. It still shows up, but I, you, there's no data that comes out of it. Um, and you've got the AT port, which is the control port and data, I think DM is for the data port. And then it also shows up as a plain like USB modem. And then what's nice is all I had to do is like turn on roaming and then I just selected cool. the SORTCOM and like I unplugged Wi-Fi and I you know, disconnected the Ethernet and I was on the internet through the cellular connection. Uh, cellular connection. So it's not easy, it's really fast, um, very simple. And so, you know, especially with silicon shortages, if it's like you want to add cellular connectivity but it's impossible to get cellular modules or they're constantly changing or, you know, whatever, don't make a custom board. You may not even need an M3 module, just plug in USB. It's just, it just works and it's plenty fast. Uh, for Linux, uh, what I thought was really nice is they have like a shell script that is for Raspberry Pi and you know, you basically, um, you know, it's very, you know, I think they borrowed this like we did from uh, Pi Maroney where it's like, you know, setting up something takes so many steps that it's easier just to give somebody a shell script, tell them to pseudo curl it um, and run it and uh, it'll install everything and then you basically have um, an interface that is basically, you know, internet connectivity but again, through the cellular module, it's like the easiest, fastest, no solder way to add to single board computers. And if you have a Windows running single board computer, you use the other driver. Linux single board computer, you use this. Either way, now you've got uh, worldwide connectivity. And um, I did check the AT port and like you can absolutely use it. And you know, yes, that's the ICC ID, but don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it in half in a moment anyways, uh, cause I'm done using it. And, um, the uh, you can you can use this with uh, they had a really nice um, tutorial uh, that's linked that'll be linked from the blog post where you know you can use it as a low level modem right so you you have as a modem and then you connect to the internet service and then you have to like have all of your TCP IP packets go through it or what you can do is you can use the built in say MQTT client. And this uses a lot less data because you don't have this overhead, so it's gonna be a little faster, a little less power, but you have to script each command in. So for example, you know, they have their own uh, MQTT demo here. Um, uh, they have a, sorry, MQTT um, broker on beam.sorcom.io 183, which is MQTT port. And then um, you can connect to it, log in, and uh, also automate it with um, PySerial, so this is like a, a shell script, sorry, a, a Python script. This is PySerial, you can see it connects to the um, serial port, TTY USB 2, which is created when you plug it in, and it just sends in like the raw data to publish to a topic. And then, you know, you can then use their, um, their web interface to the MQTT broker to see the data was published. So again, you know, if you don't want to use a it's a full TCP IP stack because you want to save power, you want to save bandwidth. There's nothing lighter than just sending the raw commands. I mean, this is like, it'll just do the bare minimum to send the data, connect, send the data and disconnect right afterwards. Available on DigiKey as in like, you can really actually get it. That's why this is NPI. And they actually uh, have a lot in stock. And again, yeah. the price is very good. It's like under hundred bucks, I think. And then um, we want to go to the overhead. So this is what it looks like. Um, you know, it's got this. It's got this nice design. There's two antenna ports. Uh, you can connect to if you want to have a, a external antenna. Um, and then this is the SIM card that goes in there. Uh, so you can use any SIM card. They have they sell SIM cards, uh, indicator modem, and then yeah, this is just USB. So it's, it's you know it's it's a very convenient, easy way. And um, you know, so many. Um, electronic projects now are just a, a Raspberry Pi. You can attach whatever custom hardware or controller you want. And then it, you know, with internet connectivity so complicated, 
you want something that has like a full Linux TCP IP stack to handle connectivity for you and reconnection and your certificates and whatever, and you know, remote control, um, you just plug in this and now it's cellular connected. Okay, and I think in a blog post we'll, we'll embed that three minute long video um, so folks can watch. There's a really good conference. It's a good video, video but yeah, we'll, we'll have it on a blog post because yeah, it's, we'll it's three minutes long and I've, yeah. I've rambled enough. No, that's all good. And that's I on MPI. I on MPI.